What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Garden Sound, back here with part two of our DIY series. If you'd like to skip the introduction, go to this timestamp right here, Garden Sound. Don't forget it this time. Last time we spoke, I was working on this, which is the box with end caps that I 3D printed for the DIY modular, the DIY synth. This episode is gonna build off of episode one. If you haven't seen that, it's both in the description below and it'll be at the end of the episode in the end card. This week, I'm proud to bring you this cool ass power supply. I've got the protector cover off, but I can explain why later. Before we go any further, let me give a big, big, big shout out to Jeff and Steve at Synthrotech and Synthrotech in general. They have been absolutely instrumental, no pun intended, in getting this to me, making sure I build this correctly. Look at all the solder joints I had to do. It's a bit ridiculous. 16 solder points times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 16 times 16 just for the connectors and then the other components. What we're doing is a bit of a hack. What we're doing is leaving the 12 volt rail unregulated and using this diode to bridge the connection. And I think I've either got this right and I'm reading it incorrectly or something's wrong. And I'm still having trouble troubleshooting and figuring out exactly what's wrong with this. All three of these LEDs are supposed to light up when you plug it in and turn it on. And as you can see from my testing, part one and part two, I could only get the five volt rail at first to light up. And now I can only get the five volt and the 12 volt positive to light up. And the third LED, the 12 volt negative won't light up. And I think that's what they meant by leaving the 12 volt rail unregulated. I might just be reading it incorrectly. So maybe it's working and I don't know any better or it's not working correctly. And I just, you know, I need to spend a little bit more time troubleshooting and figuring out exactly where the weak solder joint is. But I've gone over every single solder point on this thing with a fine tooth comb. Not really sure what's going on here, but uh, I'm confident that me and the boys over at Synthrotech can figure out what's going on. Um, and we'll have it working very soon. But here's how this is gonna work. So once I get it working, this thing's gonna slot right into my case. Like, hold on, hold on. Just hold on a minute, guys, everybody, hold on a second. Like that. It's got a nice little LED, and this lights up when the power's on, and this is the switch to turn the case power on and off, and this is where the power supply plugs in. They've got these nice little connectors. So I'm gonna build a back panel and have these like sticking out right there and look all professional and stuff, like right there. See what I'm saying? And it'll look great when it's all done. Um, and it's gonna work great. And then I'm gonna start on this bad boy right here. Fold. This is a modular fold over distortion. I'm so stoked to build this thing. They're gonna send me a couple more modules and eventually what we're gonna build out is this single voice analog synth with a nasty um, full distortion module on the end that I can even plug the Model D into. So what I'm gonna do is build this out, plug the D into it and build it. <laughs> Everybody calm down, I'm talking about the Model D. In the meantime, I'm ordering a BeatStep Pro which has got octave voltage. Um, because you do one volt per octave when you're using uh, modular gear. I just learned that this week. This is something I learned. I'm ordering a BeatStep Pro, and I thought to myself, I'm never gonna order any more gear. But here I am ordering more gear, because it's either that, right? I get a BeatStep Pro off of Reverb or something, um, you know, at a discount, or I have to build out a MIDI to CV module. Um, and right now I'm a little crunched for time, and honestly, the BeatStep Pro looks pretty cool, and I've been meaning to get into Arturia's gear, so maybe there's a review coming soon of that. Um, if any of you out there have one, and you're uh, either willing to let me use it <laughs> or are looking to sell it, hit me up via that email in the about section on my YouTube channel. Today we're gonna get into some soldering. I'm gonna teach you how I solder. I'm gonna teach you a couple of cool tips for soldering. Um, and you know, we're gonna, we're, it's a journey. Cause again, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I kinda know what I'm doing, but I'm mostly winging it. And that's kind of the point of this DIY series. Before the first joint is soldered, before the first cut is made, people rarely know what they're doing. And it's way easier to just get started and go than it is to sit around and worry about your expertise level. DIY episode number two. I had a really fun time making the first episode. If you haven't seen it, check out the description below. So I had a couple more M3 screws from my father-in-law. Um, took a couple from his workshop, but I was still missing two by the end of it. All right, this episode, you're gonna need a soldering iron. You're also gonna need some solder. You're gonna need the same screwdriver from last time. 
And you're gonna need a Synthrotech kit. All of these products are gonna be linked in the description below. So I decided to change my soldering iron tip. It had been a while, plus my old soldering iron tip was a spade. And these new ones are really pointy and they're able to get down and get at really fine, hard to reach places, which this board has plenty of small things to solder and I only anticipated getting more difficult as I go. Again, love the packaging and branding by Synthrotech. I decided to take all the jack connectors and do those in one bin and everything else in the other bin. Those bins are a lifesaver, links in the description below. So here's the bill of materials, it's super easy to follow, the pictures are very easy to read, and I decided to start off the process by soldering all the jacks. It was pretty difficult to solder these jacks, especially since there really wasn't a good way to get them to stay on the board. So I messed up the first one quite a bit, but after that I was able to roll. Now, after reading the instructions on Synthrotech's website, it turns out there is a much easier way to do this. And that method would be to tape them down on the front and then turn the board over and solder them from the back as they're being pressed onto the board by the tape. I didn't know this. But as you can see, after I did one or two with my kind of weird method, it ended up working pretty well. There you go. There's the tape thing. I ended up trying it out after reading it and it was very, very easy. Love it. If I could go back and do it again, I would have done them all with the tape method. But yeah, once I got the hang of it, I was able to just roll right down a row. Then I took a break. Now we're going to put on these screw-in connectors on the end, and they're designed to hold on the power cable, LED, and switch. That'll be later. Next, I decided to put on this Molex connector. Again, I was working on connectors first. This was really easy to solder on. And the basic methodology with these parts is you take the part as it's labeled, for instance, these resistors right here. You take these, and you bend them, you look at the bill of materials, you determine where R2 is, it's labeled on the board, then you put it in and solder it and clip the tip. Oh, a note about LEDs. The longer leg is the positive leg, and it does say on the board which one of the holes is positive and negative, so just make sure you line up the polarity or you can immediately break the LED. So I decided to use Movie Magic and jump ahead here um, because the rest of the components are basically identical. You put it through the hole, you solder it in place, and you clip off the tip. The end. Now, soldering things in line like this, making a, making a connection of this, of this type, does require a bit of finesse. And I have a lot of practice making this type of connection, soldering studio wires. So then, once you get the two ends soldered on, uh, get the heat shrink on there, grab your heat shrink gun. Oh right, heat shrink gun. I'll link to that in the description down below. That's how it should look once it's done. Once we've got this done, we're going to solder on the switch. Same process. Uh, get both ends tinned and then line them up and give it one good solder to stick it on there. Don't do this. Don't solder into your hand. <laughs> I soldered the power adapter, and once that was done, I was able to put it into the connectors and screw in the terminals. All right, so here's a note about how to troubleshoot this stuff and how I've been troubleshooting this stuff. This right here is a multimeter, and it's used for a lot of stuff, but what I've been using it for is continuity, meaning, is this connection solid? Let me explain. If I turn it to this setting right here, what it's looking for is whether or not a small pulse of electricity can pass from point to point. Hear that noise? That's what happens when you connect the tips, meaning there's a complete circuit between the two tips. The same thing can be done with pretty much any piece of metal. Let's use this wire as an example. So here we go. I'm gonna connect this end of the wire to this end of the wire, and that's what continuity is a complete circuit, and it sets off that alarm. So when you're testing a circuit, you have to go one by one and test the individual joints and determine whether or not a connection is made. This process was exhausting, but necessary. Big shout out to Synthrotech, Jeff, and Steve for putting up with my shenanigans. We have this long ass email chain going on right now, um, and, and they're, they're really being generous um, with hooking me up with some modules and helping helping a brother out. If you'd like to purchase some of their equipment, 
um, check out the link in the description down below. These kits are extremely affordable and you can even build these along with me if you'd like. But as always everybody, my name's Garden Sound. Lila the bird is not in this episode because it's not a safe bird episode, but she will be in the next one and we'll see you next time.